Hey, how's it going, Luke? Hey, thanks, uh, everyone, for joining in. We have one person here live, uh, Sol. Thanks for <laughs> joining us here. And of course, Luke is our special guest. Uh, and this is our first show for uh, 2019. Uh, I've been a little bit slacking for the, the beginning of the year. I kind of got busy, but I just definitely wanted to get something started. So I, I'm, I'm, I think we. It, it's great to get started with EOS DAC and Luke Stokes because you know this is again they're kind of leading the way here with EOS DAC and uh, DAX in general. So, um, but you know I I, I figured uh, you know we it'd be great to just get an update of what's going on with EOS DAC. Uh, I know I signed up, um, it was a, you know, last month uh, to the member client. I did vote. Um, uh, <laughs> and uh, so, but I haven't followed up since then uh, seeing, you know, if you guys got the 15% uh, threshold and things like that. But anyways, let's, let's just get off the, to a good start here in the new year and just talk about what's going on with EOS DAC, I guess. So. Thanks so much for having me. And, and again, I, I'm really excited about your commitment that you've always had to kind of like helping DAX and stuff. I'm, I'm getting a little bit of echo. You're probably hearing me coming through your speakers a bit. But uh, I just, I really, really appreciate how much you've been passionate about DAX and helping support the DAX community. Um, yeah, so for, for an update, Yoast DAX, we're still cranking along. We are definitely still trying to get to that uh, ever important 15%. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop a link in here. I'm just checking it right now. We're at 13.7, actually, so we're, <laughs> we're, we're really close here. That's the link, members.eosdac.io. And, you know, our constitution asks for 15%, so that's what we're going for. We just had a meeting this Monday with our community. It was a, a community-wide meeting, and we discussed, you know, worst-case scenarios. You know, if we can't get to that 15%, what are we going to do? You know, and we talked about maybe in a couple weeks, you know, setting a hard deadline to say, okay, at this point, we're just going to turn it on. Uh, we also talked about some ideas of, yeah, there was, you know, changing the constitution. So a little tiny one line change to the constitution. We could just, you know, make it 13.5 or 13 or something. Or we talked about, you know, uh, one of the more interesting ideas was uh, using the Genesis custodian authority, which is defined in the constitution to issue more tokens, vote, and then burn the tokens. <laughs> and it was like you know, all, the, all these different, like interesting ideas uh, that would, you know, follow the, the letter and spirit of the law of what we're trying to do with the constitution. But ultimately we just, you know, we want to get an engaged community that respects the way we're trying to launch the DAC. And once that 15% hits, we can call that new period command and that will change over the permissions of the DAC over to the top 12 elected custodians. But what's been fun is just in the past you know, month or two since we last talked is those, those top 12 or so custodians have kind of settled right now, those custodian candidates. And so we've kind of been acting a little bit as if you know, we were already live as a DAC. We're kind of like saying, okay, what is this communication gonna look like? So we've had a couple uh, meetings with, the, with those members. We've had some great discussions in our Discord with them about you know, about the issues like this, like, hey, how are we going to launch the DAC? And, you know, what are the things we need to do? Uh, figuring out our, our interactions with Dococo, our service company, things like that. So it's it, it's been neat. It's kind of a preview to, you know, what we think will happen once the DAC officially launches. And so far, it's been uh, pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's exciting. And you guys are really close. I mean, was there a, a deadline, though, that you guys had? Like, I know the Constitution has some kind of like at least the US constitution has like a 120 day like rolling period or something like that. Yeah, um, no there's there's nothing defined in it but it, there's definitely one of those, you know, uh community consensus kind of things. There's a lot of people saying, "All right, let's get on with it. We want to launch the deck. Let's get it going." <laughs> and I also think about, you know, the the Genesis custodians, you know, they've taken on a pretty significant, you know, personal liability to keep running this thing, you know, under kind of their accounts in a sense. Uh, so so I'm looking forward to this more decentralized model that we, we're all hoping for. Uh, but yeah, there isn't any kind of set deadline yet. Um, but, you know, it's, it's like you said, we're really close. It's, it's you know, I did the math. I did a tweet just, I think it was Monday, that, you know, it's only, a, I think, about 13 or so million tokens. Don't quote me on that. You have to check my Twitter to know for sure. But it's, it's you know, less than 2%. We're very, very close. It's 1.3%, I guess. Uh, so, so I'm excited how close we are, how much engagement we've already gotten from the community, how much support we've gotten from the community. Uh, I was just a few minutes ago on EOS Radio, uh, did a live show with Ash and Zane and, and uh, Michael Yates as well from EOS DAC and Miles as well from Aurora EOS. And it's just neat to see so many people excited about DAX and really encouraging us and telling us, man, the world needs this. Keep doing what you're doing. So yeah, I'm encouraged. I think we're going to get there. And if we don't get there, we're going to find another model to launch the DAC. And then we're going to get this experiment going for real. Okay, great. So it's so a community, all the whales out there, go, go, go put, put EOS DAC over the top and vote and, and get that, uh, you know, we're so close. It's uh, so 
just uh just yeah throw those votes in there so um I know yeah, I can so, give I can give some other updates too on just other stuff we're working on. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think the last time we, we talked about you know the main pieces of the DAC right now are the token itself, which in, includes the membership and voting. You know, actually reading through the constitution, becoming a member of the DAC, and then we have the custodian voting contract, which manages all the uh, you know payout for worker proposals and different things. Like, well, actually not for worker proposals, but for custodians, uh, for managing the permissions for the custodians, for tallying the votes during the different periods. And then the main piece we're working on now is the worker proposal system. And as we were figuring that out, we also recognized the need for an interface to do multi-signature transactions. Because like, you know, Michael Yates or myself, other people can use Cleos to do that, but we can't expect everyday, you know, EOS members or custodians in the DAC to be able to figure out all that stuff. So another contract was made just for managing multi-signature transactions within the DAC. Because if you do it just in EOS, you know, that information can just go away and there's no way to show it on chain very easily. So we kind of have a wrapper around the EOS multi-sig so that we can track that metadata and we can display it in the user interface. So you can actually poke at it now if you wanted to, if you went to members-dev, all of our code is always open source, so everything's like available. And there's a really uh, nice, robust multi-signature system where people can approve. You, you have to be kind of voted in as a custodian on, on, on dev. So you'd have to hop in our Discord and ask somebody with a bunch of CASDAC tokens, that's what uh, they're called, to uh, on, on the jungle testnet to, to vote for you. But if you're a custodian, you actually see all these really cool tools that we're building for you know easily reviewing and approving multi-signature transactions. And that'll be part of the final piece that we really uh, are working on as well, which Dallas is doing a great job on, which is the multi-signature contract for uh, worker proposals. And so managing worker proposals, having people submit those, have the custodians vote on them, having those payments go out to another contract, which is our escrow contract, which is kind of neat in that this escrow contract, it will have no permissions at all. It'll be a completely immutable contract. So, so the keys will be nulled out and there'll be nobody has access to it. And essentially that contract, when a worker proposal is approved, the funds for that proposal will go right into that escrow account. And then there's in the code itself, a two of three permission based on the custodian board, the worker and the arbitrator that was named in the actual worker proposal when it was created. So therefore, if there's any conflict between the DAC and a worker, there's a third party that can come in and, and kind of make that decision. And their reputation will be on the line because it's all transparent, it's all you know available for people to review. So I, I just, I love the tools we're building to kind of you know, prevent conflict before it happens, you know, figure out systems that can be done on chain with cryptographic security and transparency. It's a pretty exciting thing. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of stuff there. So, I mean, um, uh, re real quick on the link, you said, uh, it's at members.eosdac.io forward slash dev D E. -L. Oh yeah, no, I, I probably, you know, I, I could give, it's just, it's actually members dash dev, but I, I probably should hesitate before giving out our, our URLs to our dev and staging stuff. I mean, it's all there and transparent and you can see it in discord as well, but I'm sure you'll run into, you know, different funky things as we're improving things and, and, and bugs and stuff like that, but you're, you're more than welcome to. And again, if you want to play around with the, the latest and greatest stack tools uh, that we're building on the jungle testnet, yeah, it's members dash dev dot EO stack dot IO. Um, oh, another thing I should mention too, our team is working on a really cool integration with Discord. It's something I've been really excited about and wanted for a long time, where you can validate your Discord, Discord account directly with your EOS account. So essentially, if you're a member of the DAC on chain, you can just talk to this bot and say, hey, you know, verify me. And it'll go ahead and do that through a token that hits the member client. And then it goes back to the bot and says, oh, okay, yeah, this is so-and-so and I can validate that they've signed the constitution and they're a member. And eventually that bot will actually set within Discord permissions for custodians as well as they get reset. So you have these private rooms and different things where like if, if the custodians have something like a security vulnerability or something they need to talk about, they'll have access to this room to discuss it. And so our, our structure in Discord is kind of fun in that we've got an open area for the whole community where everybody can chat. And then they've got a section for members only. So you have to be a member of the actual DAC and that's broken down to the different categories of the DAC, you know, like you know, tech and development or translation, stuff like that. And then there's a custodian channel, which is I think uh, publicly viewable by everybody, but only the custodians can have right access. So they can actually have meetings and discussion without a whole bunch of noise and, you know, a bunch of, you know, keeping the signal ratio high. Uh, and so I'm excited about that. It's, it's still being tested. I think it's ready to go. Um, hopefully, hopefully soon we'll be able to see that bot. I think uh, Pramod mentioned on Monday, 
that he's probably going to remove the member role in our Discord uh, a week from yesterday and then fire up the bot. So you'll have to go in and actually register so that all the members in there, there in the DAC will be provable members on chain as well. So it's, it, it's kind of neat the way we're using Discord to bring our community together. Wow. Wow. So the a, a lot of the organizational and communications <clears throat> are going to be done on, on Discord, which will be integrated with uh, EOS DAC so that you can identify members and custodians and and have some permissions for different channels, it seems, which yeah. is exciting. It's been it's been great so far. Discord's been pretty good. A lot of people kind of you know laugh at a little bit, said ah, it's just this gamer platform, or whatever. But it has some really amazing uh, functionality. Like we have meetings throughout the week. We've got a public calendar, so we've got you know this communications meeting today, working on a new website. Um, there's you know tech and development meetings happening three times a week. There's block production meetings. There's uh, management meetings. All these meetings happen in in the voice channel and also throughout you know text channel as well. So. It's it, it, it's a nice tool. It's worked out well because I think it's kind of brought us together as a more cohesive community, not just living on chain on EOS, but actually having conversations with each other. Yeah, I got I got to join the Discord channel for sure. I, I, I'm curious about all the tools. I mean, we use, uh, you know, Zoom and all of that. But then, you know, Zoom is, is nice, but the video probably might not be as necessary, you know, audio. And just I, I guess Discord, you're just using uh, kind of a, a audio and, and just communicating that way and uh, chat. Uh, that might just be uh, sufficient. So I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll definitely join that. Uh, yeah, I'm dry, I'm dry. You, you just, you're, you're lining them up for me, man. I'm just, I'm just, you're, you're giving me that, you're throwing up a lob and I'm, I'm putting it in. I just, there you go. There's the link to the Discord. Definitely join right. us. That'd be great. Hey, how's it going, Max? Hey, Max. Good yeah. to see you around me too as well. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So, all right. Now this is exciting. So you guys have a lot going on. That's amazing. Just integrating with Discord, uh, you know, just organization, you know, how, how you conduct uh, organizational tasks are important. And I, I like the way, you know, Discord's a little bit more uh, kind of a newer technology, I think, for people and gamers and, and so very uh, tech oriented. But I think it, it's effective, though. It's just it has what you need, really just a chat and uh, audio video. Video is good every once in a while, but probably is a uh, overkill for most meetings it seems um yeah you know I've, I've been thinking about that more and more i think that there are some meetings that we have that where video would be really good so i i can see potentially in the future using like zoom or, or something else or something like this platform here uh crowdcast because i i do think there's some body language and things that are important especially especially when there's any kind of conflict you know when people aren't completely in agreement about something and they're confused and they want to understand where someone's coming from being able to you know, look someone in the eyes and see their facial expression, see their body language, see where they're really coming from. It helps people kind of go, oh, OK, wait, maybe I have the wrong impression about this uh, at times. So, I, yeah, it'll be interesting to see a lot of platforms, you know, started out with just text and then they eventually moved to you know voice and then they moved to video as well. So it'll be interesting to see if Discord does that. But ultimately, we're going to use whatever tool works for the community and, you know, I'd love to see more decentralized systems built on EOS. You know, maybe there'll be a Discord on EOS at some point. Yeah, yeah, and for the for the board, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm experiencing this a lot with you know we're doing with EOSSF, and I have another organization that we kind of bootstrap for, um, you know, just a, another um, just just yeah, just another type of business, or it was a nonprofit, but it's a nonprofit, but you know, you know, Robert's Rules of Order, and you know, voting motions, things like that. Are you are you working on that, like that part of it, like? Uh, well, yeah, it's an interesting question because, in a sense, um, we abstract that all away uh, by multisig. I mean, that, that's ultimately that's all going to be everything's going to be done on chain. So anybody can propose any of the custodians, for example, once we once we get to that 15 percent, once you all help us spread the word to get to 15 percent, uh, they can submit a worker proposal or, or a, a multisig transaction, for example, to make a change to the DAC or to, you know, uh, fund some project that people want to see funded. And the discussion will then take place, hopefully, once we get it all built out, they're on chain. So your own account can leave a comment and that'll be there, you know, transparently as part of the discussion for that actual event. Um, and then and then it ultimately comes down to, you know, talk is cheap, but your action matters. So when someone signs it and says, yeah, I approve, you know, or, or the opposite, they say, oh, I don't approve. Then that's really ultimately what matters. I think some of the systems like Robert Rules and stuff are kind of needed when you have to kind of like hash things out in dialogue format. Whereas in a more decentralized, you know, 
community, it's everyone's an individual. You know, you, you all come with your own opinions, your own views, and you let those views be known on chain with who you stake, who, who you vote for with your stake as far as the custodian candidates and things like that. So I think it kind of like cuts down a little bit on the need for all that kind of back and forth and all that structure in the actual discussion phase because it's all done again on chain. The structure is right there in the blockchain. <laughs> Yeah, it is interesting to think about because, you know, you, everyone's now participating. Uh, but uh, maybe I was thinking about more like, if the, you know, the, the board has maybe different actions that they have to take just as a group. Right. So they, there's probably some kind of uh, organizational tools or administration to, to, to at least uh, help them. And then and then I think ultimately, yeah, if, it, if it's a if it's a proposal for the entire community, then. You, you have the voting system that's already that you guys already have. So maybe it was just more for uh, organizational efficiencies of, of conducting board meetings and maybe any other committee meetings. I don't know if you guys are thinking of having any of these smaller committees. Or like usually there's like a finance committee or a. Yeah, yeah. Well, the nice yeah. thing about you know, Stack, the way we've structured it is essentially everything is just a worker proposal. Whatever is an active proposal is essentially what it, the DAC is doing. So the. I, when I think about the custodian board, I don't necessarily think of them as actually accomplishing much. It's not so much that you kind of like expect them like a traditional board to you know, provide all the direction and do everything. I think ultimately, yeah, they have a huge role to play and it's important, but it's the people actually doing the work, creating value that ultimately are going to define the direction of the DAC. And so people submit worker proposals. So in that example, um, like I mentioned, a comms team meeting, you know, there's a, a, a group of people that are working on the website and they've got their own, you know, whatever mechanism they're comfortable with for within that group of people getting stuff done. So they have their own meeting note structure, their own, you know, preferred way of doing things. So I, I think it's kind of more about how these individual groups of people and, and beautifully, if it's a DAC, they could kind of trade in and out. People can be involved or not involved. I think there's some groups that I was more involved in at one point and then I haven't been involved in as much and I've empowered other people's to be like, Hey, you know, you're doing a great job. You don't need me to run these meetings. You run the meetings. And, and if it's really a DAC, then it's not going to rely on any one person. So anybody's going to be able to jump in and out and provide value, which is really exciting, you know? And so you don't, again, you don't need as much structure when you have these kind of like long lived positions where, you know, you've got the chairman of the board and the, you know, that kind of stuff. It's really just people, flowing in and out based on their availability. And there are times when, you know, maybe, hey, someone's on vacation, not around. It's like, okay, well, then that doesn't get done or the DAC pays someone else or someone else shows up to get it done. And it, it really gives a lot of autonomy and freedom, which is, I think, something we all want. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I, 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 I like that model, but then there's, there's also the other point of kind of counterbalancing that with, okay, well, you need someone to, um, you know, uh, kind of take the initiative to, and also to maintain, and this is the, the other, you know, what do you think about, like, if, if it's too fluid in and out, like, how, how do you retain the kind of the, uh, just the, the I mean, how, how does it become sustainable if you don't have, like, at least a number of people, like, driving it, or at least, a, you know, a, a longer period of time, and it, this is kind of interesting, because, I, I think, you know, people always talk about why you have a firm or organization in the first place. And there's the theory of the firm. And, you know, those are some of the questions, you know, we just got to figure out there are, there is a firm, there's a, you know, and it's not all free market where, and, and I think we're going towards that where it's, it's, you get a lot more efficiency, but there is still this, this idea. Okay. So like long-term employment versus contract work, like why do you even have extended, right? And maybe one of the reasons is that you need some continuity. You need someone to continue to kind of lead or initi initiate or continue to uh, initiate like these activities to sustain it. So. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, and and really like, I mean, I could go through the list of the people like Dallas and Pieces of Bits and, you know, Michael Yates and I mean, all these people providing technical expertise and actually doing the work of building, you know, and all of our translators and all of our content people, you know, uh, Pramod and Andrew, and I can just go through the list and list. We just got a, a, a new team member as well, Lucas, who's been helping out with the the new website, building out a Jekyll Static site and, you know, and not doing amazing designs. I mean, again, I could go on and on. So I could name all these incredible people. And for sure, if, if they just were to leave, you know, Gordon helping with the website, I, I mean, there's so many people, I probably missed a bunch. If they were to leave, it would be you know, in some cases, devastating. It'd be so frustrating. It'd be, oh man, now we just, you know, we stop. We don't get to have that same momentum we had. But at the same time, um, the beautiful thing about the system we have is that they are participating because they're passionately involved. 
not because they've committed to some X number of years uh, of employment, right? So the worst, what would be worse than that is having someone in a position of influence and responsibility and they don't want to be there. And that's what you see often in the traditional job system where it's like, well, it's my career. I've made a commitment to my employer and I'm pretty much just stuck here, even though I'm miserable. And they're clocking in, but they're not really there. You know, they, they, they dread Mondays every Sunday night. And it's like that, I think, is almost worse than having this dynamic flexibility where, yeah, you might lose somebody. But ultimately, you know what that does is that keeps us all being really polite to each other. Right. Like we, we have we've lost people in the community where they they just didn't gel with other people or they got frustrated or maybe they left and then came back or, you know, like and it kind of keeps us all on our toes going, oh, by the way, this is completely voluntary. There's no box keeping us in line. There's no person, you know, we all just have to be nice to each other. And, and because we know how fragile it is, just like you said, there, there isn't that promise of continuity to ensure that the people here today are the same people are going to be here tomorrow. Uh, and so it's all an experiment. So far, I've, I've been really amazed how engaged everybody's been. And I think people are passionate to see this thing through and actually see it exist as, as the full done member client with all the contracts on chain. And then hopefully eventually this DAC factory where you can just, you know, click some buttons and launch your own DAC. That's the ultimate, you know, product that we want to provide to the EOS community and really to the wider crypto community. And then beyond that, hopefully eventually to the world. So it's like, even if you're not a cryptocurrency person, you could just come in and be like, oh man, I want to do a startup or I want to do a nonprofit or I want to do a, a small local government thing or, or a HOA. I mean, who knows? And I can just have all the tools to do this transparently and in, you know, re respect the kind of will of the token holders in the community. Yeah, that's, that's great. I think, yeah, those are, those are great points. And, uh, and Rami says, yeah, uh, you know, knowledge also doesn't get stuck with individuals uh, because there's a, you know, expectation of a uh, dynamic community. So I think yeah, there is uh, the resilience part of it. Um, the, you know, it, it, yeah. So it is sustainable in that respect, where you, you, because you know the knowledge is open, that someone else can come in and and pick uh, things back where uh, you know things are left off. So, um, so yeah, I, I do see that. Is there's there's more of a re resilience of, of that. Um, one of the other challenges, though, I think, is okay. So then you have okay, uh, maybe like competing visions about like things that maybe. Uh, I, I would say conflicting or, or, you know, challenging to do both at the same time, if uh, you know, at the least, right? Yes, so, definitely. Yeah, That's, yeah. Actually, uh, Michael Yates on EOS Radio, we were just on, made a really important point that if you're going to launch your own DAC, one of the most important things you should do is really clarify your vision. Like, what is the DAC about? And that way, that vision is so crystal clear that it just cuts through a lot of those disagreements. So, for example, EOS DAC is about the community-owned block producer and DAC enabler. It's so very, very simple. We are building DAC enabling tools and we're doing so as a community owned block producer on the EOS chain, which is the core fundamental technology layer that it, it creates, you know, the, the possibility for DACs to exist. So I, I think that that's an important piece. And if there is a conflict, you know, we should do this or we should do that. It's often just going to be, you know, lack of clarity on that vision or it's going to be a, in some cases, just a disagreement on the best way to get there. And, and we, I've seen some situations where there's, you know, might be personality conflicts or there might be situations where people are, um, you know, upset because their approach didn't get picked and maybe somebody's going a different direction. And I think ultimately, you know, you never get get around that. There's always human nature involved. And the only way I know to do that is, you know, all of us to learn nonviolent communication, try to be less judgmental, try to, uh, you know, appreciate other people's perspectives and, and honor their points of view and really just put everything out there so that we can come to the best, you know, best conclusion as a community. Yeah, yeah, I think that that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. From the first point, you know, just having a like a a strong vision so that it's more of a goal that everyone can align with uh, about how to get there. Uh, I mean, it, well, at least we'll be able to recognize like the that whatever issues that they have, as long as it's it, it's it's uh, trying to achieve that that big goal. That you know, there'll be some kind of compromise in the end about the best way to get there. Um, and then, I, you know, I'm sure, you know, again, this is the whole idea of like in crypto of like, you know, if you have a large enough uh, group of people that have a different idea, then you just kind of have an, a fork, right? And, <laughs> and you have another chain and it, it's, you know, another way of decentralizing. You know, you don't, it's not probably a good thing to do too often, too early. 
but uh, but eventually there's the, the the option and then having the right to secede like a state had the right <laughs> originally. Yeah, in, I mean, in it, the it US does it. Like I said, it keeps you on your toes. You know, if we don't keep yeah. the community happy with what EOSTack is doing, then ultimately, you know, again, all of our source code is open. You know, anybody can take everything we've done and just create a new version of it. And they could do an airdrop of a new token and they could, you know, get their own network of community engaged and involved. And, uh, you know, they could try to reach their own 15% in voting, right? Yeah, this is all possible. Uh, but yet, I think what really could, what it comes down to in the same in crypto communities is that you know it's the network effect that creates all the value and every time you fork you you often kind of separate these networks out and then it dilute you know dilutes it a little bit and you don't have that same influence that you would if you all work together so i i see a future where hopefully we're going to be all working together as a community within the larger crypto space of people you know cryptocurrency space people trying to build freedom and it won't matter which chain or which token you know there's hopefully we have a lot less tribalism when you can use kind of Cross blockchain communication, like but the Boss Network, just you know demonstrated as possible. You know ways that you, we can start moving tokens and value across chains. Hopefully, we'll kind of break down some of those barriers and people start realizing, okay, I still love my little pet project. And I don't want to use any other project, but maybe I'll just use this little piece over here on EOS for governance because you know they do that kind of well. You know, or maybe I'll use this other piece over here for something else because they do that well. And you know, and I, I would hope to see these projects start working together a little bit more. That'd be that'd be really cool. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. It seems to be a general trend in EOS in general with so many different, um, you know, sister or side chains that are popping up. And I think it's a good thing to decentralize. Uh, it may, you know, it, it may be, I mean, if there's too much of that too early, then maybe it kind of can can weaken the, the system a little bit. But I, I think in general, it's okay. It's as long as, uh, you know, there's a, and, and, and the reality too is, as you mentioned, uh, you know, the network effect of the, the main chain always uh, seems to be pretty resilient so that, you know, um, you know, if you dilute, it's it, like, you're not going to get that much unless you really have traction somehow and, and do a lot of work uh, to, to, to get that. So, so I kind of uh, noticed that uh, that's, even though it's a trend, it's, it's, it's still, you know, the main chain is just yeah, and I see that as kind of, from my understanding, kind of the the end goal, like block one was building this with that in mind, with the idea that we're going to be supporting all these different chains and they're going to be talking to each other, you know, very seamlessly. I mean, just today I was kind of refreshing the myself on the EOS, original EOS white paper and it has a whole section on inner blockchain communication. You know, this is this is one of the promises that we're hoping will still be delivered. And so from that perspective, I think, you know, customized because we look at it as EOS is like an operating system, EOS IO, but having it customized for specific needs. I mean, I just did a post uh, today about my involvement with FIO. I'm going to be helping out with them to build this really awesome, you know, inter-wallet operability protocol layer that I think is going to make everything super easy for people using cryptocurrency. And, you know, they're working with the EOS software as far as like how they're doing that. And you've got that with Boss and Warbly and Telos and all these other communities that are doing that. I've actually... And I, I should probably just mention it here. I'm just today. I was thinking about getting together some people who have have experience with core modifications of EOSIO and getting that community together to work together because we're all, you know, we're all going to be running into the same challenges as far as like security updates and you know how do we uh, take our modifications and bring them on to the latest version of EOSIO as it gets released and and again how can we can work together to communicate cross chain so that the the network effect doesn't get diluted so that, it, that everyone on EOS mainnet will also have some level of interaction with these other chains based on whether or not the value those other those specific value those chains provide is useful to them yeah yeah no definitely i'm i'm, I'm totally with you i just uh, we should collaborate on that i mean i was thinking like consortium because like a consortium of uh like all eos io um chains uh yeah. is is definitely needed and what was the what was the one you you just mentioned i miss misheard or uh, i didn't hear the the you were working with some fio you, uh, yeah fio the fio if you go to fio.foundation the fio protocol uh, i'm pretty excited about that it's a group i've been working with since october i just actually just did a steam it post about it today if you want to check my my steam but I, i've been advising with them since october and i uh, i just announced today that i'm going to be taking a part-time cto position with them to help them kind of build the team for this. They're, they're raising some funds right now. And it's essentially a mechanism where you can just kind of, you know, I could just transfer any amount of any token to you without having to know your individual addresses. It could just be like, you know, 
Dot bread wallet or June dot Coinbase or whatever, and then I can just send you tokens, and it, it just makes it so much easier. It's similar to how people use PayPal and this that, and the other. And what's neat about that is I hung out with them a couple of days last week in Denver. Um, we started talking about the Fiat Foundation and how it be structured, and we all just kind of went like, "Well, yeah, we should make it a DAC, right?" Like we said, we just started talking about like the Fiat Foundation could potentially be using the EOS DAC software once we get it launched to actually do its own governance and. The more we kind of played around with the idea, the more it made sense. And, you know, it's very early stages in, in all this stuff, but it was just kind of neat to think like the things that I'm working on building are things that they need. You know, they are already saying like, oh, we have to put budget in for creating a, a you know, token explorer, for example. I'm like, well, EOS DAC already did that and it's free and anyone can use it. It's open source, you know. And so I get excited about how the synergy of all these projects coming together to eventually just you know improve human well-being make a world we all want to live in and uh and make these tools for self-ownership and freedom like cryptocurrencies just easier for everybody yeah no that's great okay so i've never heard of that one so f-e-o fio f-i-o yeah let me let me drop let me drop another link and you can see that there's some really big players already involved uh you got the edge wallet you've got shapeshift You've got Kiki, Konoimi, My Crypto, Mycelium, BRD Wallet, and more to come that I can't announce yet. Uh, so it's it's pretty exciting. It's a it's a it's a pretty neat thing. Wow! Wow! This yeah. is great, Rami. I, I I was super excited to hear uh, Nathan give that shout out. I think we were on uh, I think we were on EOS Radio another time, and he just started going off all about it. I'm like, yeah, I, I've been advising with him. So so actually, yeah, uh, you could let Nathan know that I just I just uh, today announced that I'm I'm going to be officially working with them part-time as their as their CTO. So I'm excited about it too. I, I, and I did actually, as I was on a way out to Denver, I was reading, refreshing myself again with the scatter white paper because I really like what you guys are doing with the reputation, uh, non-fungible token and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just, I'm so excited to see all these people work together and create a, a protocol to meet the needs of the community that we all get to own. And it's not going to just be these little silos. It's going to be everybody working together. So I, I hope to work with you guys more uh, in the future. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, that's exciting. All right. So, and yeah, Scatter's have been phenomenal. Like just yeah, like all the things going on there too. And the, and the bridge, I, you know, you're reading about the bridge and trying to make it usable or easy for uh, people to use. And I think we're getting there. We're getting it so close to, to the mainstream there. Just, uh, just, to, you know, key management and i think just uh you know ui ux just things we're getting there though we're getting really close and, and, and you know eos is you know by far way ahead of the game i think in terms of usability in general compared to other blockchains so um so yeah that's fantastic so uh yeah what else a any questions out there for luke if anyone has any questions feel free to type it in there uh there is a little ask a question section at the bottom as well, if you want to use that, but just maybe on the, on the chat window. Uh, but yeah, a lot of things going on. I'm excited to check out the discord. I'm excited to even take a little peek at the, 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 uh, the dev <laughs> uh, URL. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was thinking I probably should do a little video, like just demoing the, the MSIG as it exists today. Uh, it, it's pretty neat to see it come together. They were just working on it today and doing some example executions of multi-sig transactions and stuff. And oh, also too, I should mention, this is just for fun. Uh, if you go into settings, there's, or actually there's a, uh, there's a credits page, which is like this awesome throwback 80s thing, which is just hilarious. Um, so if you go to members.eostack.io, in the left menu, hit the little hamburger menu and drop it down and hit credits. Uh, you might want to turn your uh, speakers down when you turn it on because it's it's got this like 80s retro music and it's just hilarious. It's like Namcat. <laughs> like <laughs> the end cool. of the game, like a Nintendo game. Like yeah, it's hilarious. It's super funny. So we just, said, you know, we give a shout out to all the block producers and uh, some community members and people that have helped us get where we are so far. Uh, it was just one of the fun things. That, I mean, this is the kind of things you get to do as a DAC. If the community wants to do it and people working on it, more, they just do fun stuff. And you don't see that as much in kind of more corporate structures. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. You could, yeah, it's like you could have fun with as as game developers. They always do that. Hey, uh, so real quick, I'm on Scatter. I was gonna log in. It says uh, it's app key ends with nineteen two two. I guess that's okay. I'll allow that. Right? Is that the, the app key for Scatter? Maybe Rami knows. I'm just gonna say allow just real quick. And I think I should be in. Okay, so I'm logged in. So uh, credits, right? Oh, so yeah, I should yeah. I should turn the volume down. Maybe I should. Uh... 
<laughs> well, it's just, I forget if it's on by default or not, but like that when you turn the sound on and off, it changes the background and you get this like classic retro 80s, like 8 bit music going on. It's kind of fun. <laughs> okay, you hear it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I see the all the colors and the star, and it's very psychedelic. <laughs> I got a good laugh out of that when, when Michael Yates and Pieces and Bits were like, hey, let's do this for the credits page. And I was like, all right. You know, and they just pushed it out. And I was like, heck, yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, you guys got to check it out. Go go, sign in and see the credits on, on uh, ES Deck uh, website here. And But uh, that was cool. And, uh, you know, the wall of the Constitution, vote. A worker proposal. Maybe we'll, we'll just go there. Like what, what worker proposals, you know, they're getting ready. I know you guys aren't, aren't quite there yet, uh, but, you know, assuming that, you know, maybe in a couple of weeks, it'll, it'll all, you know, you, you get through the, uh, above the threshold and then the worker proposals, like I'm sure people are all um, ready to propose or maybe already have proposed things. Like, is there anything uh, on that end that you kind of can yeah, maybe get them on? Yeah, definitely. Uh, if you go to eostack.io right now, the page is loading a little slow right now for some reason. But if you go to eostack.io uh, and click under, let me see where it is. But you can actually view right now under updates and click active worker proposals. And then if you click through on that, it'll actually go to a Google spreadsheet. And this is just kind of how things are being managed today until we get these contracts done. So it's it's all transparent. You can see it here on this Google spreadsheet. But these are all the worker proposals that are currently uh, active and have been paid out. So we've been running as a DAC essentially for quite some time now. And the Genesis custodians have kind of made decisions and voted on who gets paid, which appro you know, which proposals get uh, approved and for which amounts. And then eventually, you know, that'll move over to being an on-chain process completely. So we won't be using a spreadsheet anymore. But uh, it's neat to see it actually function. I mean, people are getting paid because the block producer uh, EOS DAC has EOS revenue, and that revenue is being distributed to people that are actually creating value and building something that we believe the entire EOS community and EOS network is going to greatly benefit from. I mean, even just the idea of, you know, if you have a, a, a smart contract or a token, being able to create a DAC structure with multi-signature in order to protect that account is really important. A lot of people don't really think about that. They think, you know, oh, they'll just leave the you know private key on there, no big deal. Well, if that private key gets hacked, for example, on a token that's worth millions of dollars, well, you know, someone could just remove your token immediately. So the idea being that even, I mean, pretty much every app I feel like on EOS should be a DAC, even just for that one little bit of permissions, where you can spread out the permissions of a specific account according to that DAC authority. I think that's uh, that alone is a really valuable thing. And then those people that are trusted by that community are actually voted in by that community to protect those stores of value and those system contracts is really important. Yeah, yeah, the, the multi-sig is, is great. I didn't want to get too too technical with that, but it seems as though, I mean, uh, so when you throw away the keys, the only, after that point, only the block producers are super majority of block producers on EOS can can do anything to maybe fix any situation with that. Is that is that correct? Yeah, I mean, if you throw it away completely, sure. Um, like for example, we have got that escrow account. When the worker proposal gets paid out, it goes to an escrow account which has no you know keys. And then we've talked that through, and we said, okay, what happens if that contract just blows up and there's something broken we didn't purchase? C? Well, we'll most likely do just create another account, and then we'll push out code to a new account, and we'll modify our contracts to point to the new account. That modification will be something that our custodians uh, have control over and get. You know, obviously, because they're voted in by the token holders, they'll have the uh, approval of the community to do. But we, we probably won't mess with. You know, hey, block producers, come. You know, fix our broken account. You know, I, technically, you could you could do a proposal uh, for the block producers to do that, but that would get a little messy. I think it would be easier just to create a new account. And, and then the other thing about the multi-sig, then maybe I, I kind of diverted away from that. So the multi-sig, you know, EOS has a multi-sig and now you guys have this wrapper multi-sig. Now, uh, and it was more, you were saying for uh, kind of displaying uh, just uh, how it works. Like how, how, how does how does that work? How do you go from like an EOS multi-sig uh, to this wrapper multi-sig? And, uh, and maybe is it's, you, you, you mentioned it was also about like having a, record or history of, 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 you know, you know, showing who, what the multi-sig uh, kind of actions were, but 
so yeah, I'm kind of curious to know a little bit more about that. Just uh, yeah, it's, it would be much easier if I could show a visualization, which I, I don't have scattered open at the moment, or else I could maybe share my screen or something. But essentially, it's just a way that you can easily within the member client show all the pending multi-signature uh, issues and format the data, the, the the metadata about the multi-sig in a way that's human readable and understandable. So the custodians could come in and say, oh, okay, I see exactly what type of transaction this is. I see what it's going to do. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and approve it or not. And, and so that's, it's, it's just a way to provide a little extra. So it still uses the EOS IO multi-sig account, um, MSIG account, but it also kind of just wraps it with more useful data. So you could, for example, keep track of ones that were canceled and ones that got approved so that you have some historical data there as well. Because it, the way it works right now in uh, EOSIO, EOSIO.MSIG, you know, it, it lives as this kind of thing waiting for approvals, but once it's approved and executed, it's just gone. And then there's no there's no real history of it unless you were to kind of replay the chain and figure out, oh, that was created at this point and then it was executed at this point. So it's just a way to keep track of that metadata and display it in the member client in a way that is uh, is useful for the custodians and, and, and the community to have some visibility. And eventually, as we move into full worker proposals, like I said, there'll be on-chain discussions about those proposals as well. So we have to kind of keep that, that data around for people to interact with. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great. Just the usability of multi-sig, I think it, it, it enhances. So I'm I'm sure it's like, I don't know what applications are out there, but I mean, you, you have, probably have to use uh, Cleos and, you know, and well, then it's it, like. That's what, we're, that's what we're trying to make easier. You know, our member yeah. client in the multi six section is just super simple. You know, uh, at, at the moment, I don't think we're, we have the ability to create the M sigs. Most likely it'll be like Michael Yates or someone like myself using Cleos to create those because it's still a little bit tricky. But, you know, as we continue to evolve the tools, especially within the worker proposal system in the future, everything will be done as a worker proposal. And the only things that will be done is like pure M6, we probably like set code commands to update the code or, uh, you know, things like that. Yeah. What was the last part? Set, set code? Or? Set code is like when you have an account and you set the, the, the code on that account. That's the command that you call to to you know, build any kind of application or anything on EOS, you, you have actually code that lives on a specific account. And that's that process within EOS stack has to be done as a multi-signature. You have to have the correct number of approvals for the right permission threshold to be able to change the code of the DAC. And that's by design. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, that's great. So all any kind of upgrades are just, you have like permissions for a very, yeah, very, very, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Just, just, yeah, very clean uh, in terms of, what you guys are building so no i'm excited i mean i have a you know i'm thinking about just some, some maybe uh some smaller projects that uh, i think want to use it use a dax structure it's good to experiment with this this small project and yeah that'd be good be, to, to that'd be awesome yeah maybe, maybe yeah we can get you as an advisor here <laughs> I, well, I just i think it'd be fun i mean i've thought about this personally as an entrepreneur you know and i think i've said this before on the show here is that if if i do a new startup i, I don't necessarily want to do a traditional like centralized startup i want to build a community you know i want to build a DAC, and then i could even if it's just me i could on chain you know keep track of everything that i've done to add value to that story and then in that process later as more people get involved then I would have a justification for my level of skin in the game. You know, like, hey, I put in all these hours, I put in all this work, so I own this amount of tokens, therefore I have this amount of say in the governance. And as more people come in and add more value than me, or maybe they even add financial value and buy up the token or whatever the situation might be, if that's completely on chain, um, you can just create a really great story for why any given idea and community behind it has any value. And so I hope that'll be the kind of future approaches people take. They won't just be like, yeah, I'm going to build my own little kingdom and be the king, you know, the central hierarchy authority guy. But instead of going, hey, I'm going to build a group of people and I'm going to tell a great story for why the value I've contributed is meaningful. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. I, I like uh, this is, you know, kind of one of the key issues, I think, in, in, in organizations in general to how, how you how you split um, contributions. And I think in traditional organizations that they're they're all they're very simplified and most most organizations don't get it right it's uh, and startups are, are are like in the same boat I, so it's 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 to 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 be able to be more precise about contributions and uh allow more people to get involved sooner and all of these uh aspects are, are very very uh incredibly valuable and so one of the things i know so telus has done a you know they they, they have a slice slicing the pie model uh, i've i've you know 
kind of thought about this for a long time about like equity allocation and distribution and uh, and and so but but having a system like you know how how you have the worker proposals and you know you can earn tokens or equity uh other you know aside from just eos or it's the same thing i mean if, if you're getting paid maybe eos DAC tokens for your worker proposal is it's kind of like the equity in in the system right um i don't know who what, what you get paid in worker proposals is it eos or eos DAC? Um, right now it's it's eos and and i think that was based on you know initial interactions with the lawyer saying you know we're not a security we're clearly a, a utility token that provides you know this this system um, so they didn't want it to be, you know, you know, stack tokens at the beginning, but now that all the worker proposal system is going to be, is completely moved, you know, being moved over to the service provider, uh, via Jococo, that's kind of our service provider that does all the contractual relationships with the workers, you know, for any jurisdiction where they have to do like, you know, employment taxes or, you know, anything like that, all that liability is going to be way over there in that service provider. So under that model, uh, I, I, I believe kind of the latest update has been, you know, there'd be no reason not to pay in whatever token the service provider decides, because ultimately they're just responsible to the DAC to supplying this service that the DAC wants. That's that's the one contract the DAC has essentially is working with the service provider. And so I, I think that might be something we see in the future. I, I don't know exactly how that'll look as far as, you know, how that service provider will obtain uh, EOS DAC tokens, because, you know, obviously the DAC as a block producer gets revenue in EOS. And so if they were to pay out an EOS DAC, then there'd probably have to be some kind of market maker uh, bot or some kind of, you know, programmatic selling of EOS to get EOS DAC or something. But that would be interesting because it could, it could support the token value of the community members that are involved. And as you said, it could create, you know, more equity and skin in the game kind of a deal. But, uh, you know, there's all these kind of legal, you know, things that we have to work through to make sure that we're doing everything right and transparent. And, um, you know, I don't think anybody, you know, wants to do this in a way that would be looked at as like a security. I think if we went that direction, we would, you know, we'd have to go through all the legal hoops to actually be a real security. And I, I don't, I don't think anybody's interested in that at this point. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I mean, it's all that's always the biggest issue with with um, these equity like tokens. And I, I'm, 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 you know, I, I like the idea of. Uh, Cause you know, there's this, I, I like the idea of this, this idea of partnership tokens and partnership ICOs. I don't know, is legally it's a gray area, but I'm, I'm always pushing it. The idea that if someone is active in the business and you know, there's a Howey test, you know, it's investment of money, number one, um, in a common em enterprise, number two, with the expectation of profits, number three, for uh, solely due to the efforts of others. And that, yes. that fourth point, is something we could get around by with a partnership at ICO and exactly because EOS DAC provides these tools where we're all involved in the operations. So we're like partners. We're not necessarily mm -hmm. investing in someone else. We're partners together, actively uh, uh, determining the future of the business and uh, in daily activities as well. So just by the mere fact that you can vote, you're, you're participating in the business. And I say, Hey, that's, that's a, that's a partnership and we're all together. Well, and the, you know, these are the experiments that we're going to be running. <laughs> you know, this, is, this is what we're figuring out. And, and ultimately the long-term goal is for, you know, DAX to be recognized by governments as, as not necessarily a partnership association, not necessarily a joint and several liability where everyone's just on the hook for any stupid thing anybody does, but just, you know, some, some new model that governments can recognize to say, you know, these are individuals working together according to these new systems of on-chain governance that are kind of prevent crime before it can happen. You know, that's really a lot of the kind of story we're told is that governments provide all this consensus, but ultimately if, if that's not needed because we can provide our own consensus with cryptographic security, um, yeah, that's like an exciting thing. And so hopefully a lot of the regulations and concerns kind of no longer become valid because you know, we figured all that stuff out ourselves, you know, as a community. Yeah, yeah, it is new territory, and I think we can find new categories for it. But I, I think even with existing categories, it can actually still bypass kind of the, but, you know, it's a gray area. I'm, I'm, that's what I'm trying to push, <laughs> trying to push this idea of this. And um, we'll see. I mean, it's got to be tried in the courts, and, uh, and you know, the SEC can do what they want, I guess. Um, but the good thing is, though, is this is all on chain. So, I mean, really, if, if, if you, we go that way and it's purely on chain, I know you have the service provider kind of hybrid model, but if you are purely on the chain, it's like really hard for people to, you know, go after you like 
just if they wanted, right? I mean, it's it's on chain. They well, can go after you individually, I guess. Yeah, and that's that's what we've learned from our lawyers is that essentially, you know, the understanding of how this will be perceived, and we've talked about this a little bit before, is like a, a partner or is like a you know association or a partnership in that anybody with joint sub of liability will be liable for anything that anyone else does within this DAC, and and that is not the best for the community. I mean, you get one person that does something terrible, and then all of a sudden, whoever is visible, like people like me, you know, I have a name, I'm not just some pseudo anonymous, you know, entity. And so people like me or anyone else could become a target just because of something somebody else did. You know, and that's, that's not ideal. That's not what we're going for. So having this liability shifted over to a company that has insurance that has, you know, is recognized by the government in traditional sense. I think that's makes the most sense for the type of DAC we're doing, which is this kind of DAC enabler and, you know, publicly known, block producer, which is dealing with larger amounts of resources uh, with the block rewards. But I think uh, many, many other DACs in the future will be all kinds of different models. You know, some of them may not ever touch fiat currency at all, which is again, another reason why we need to have a service provider and deal with, you know, actually getting banks and insurance and that kind of stuff. Um, but other DACs in the future might be completely different. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting, all the experiments that, that'll be the different models, you know, hybrid, pure, your decks and just it just in general and i think yeah just the idea that you know we're gonna see uh all this experimentation in real time and and be part of it a part of this experimentation i think is exciting uh, to see what what comes out of it um you know <laughs> well, thank, thank you again june for again all your continued support and just getting community involvement and engagement with this kind of that concept i really appreciate it uh, i probably have to get going here pretty soon i've got to i've got to say hello to my family and get some dinner here but uh, I've really appreciated, as always, the conversation. And thank you guys for showing up uh, in the audience. I really appreciate it. It's fun to talk about this stuff. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks, guys, for sh uh, showing up. And thanks. You know, we'll continue this, you know, weekly webcast on tokenomics and DAX. So hopefully, you know, Luke will keep uh, giving us updates as we go. And definitely come back, especially when if you hit over 15%. And <laughs> we can all celebrate. Yeah, uh, hopefully but, we'll uh, have something to celebrate. It won't just be like a DAC that just, okay, now we launched and just freezes. You know, that's one of the worst concerns is that we don't get anything <laughs> oh, done. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you're anxious to make sure that all, all the tech is, uh, yeah. is all solid. So, uh, But yeah, thanks, guys. We'll see you back next week. Uh, we'll wrap it up. Thanks so much, Luke. Uh, look forward to having you kind of future episodes and uh yeah uh uh we'll, we'll call it a wrap thanks so much guys right, take, take care. care take care